A disgraced former minister loses her position as deputy leader of Trinidad and Tobago's governing party. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Tuesday, August 13th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Don Paris. Good evening. Marlene McDonald has been removed as the deputy leader of the ruling People's National Movement, PNM, less than 24 hours after she was fired as public administration minister on the heels of being slapped with several fraud-related charges. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced her dismissal on Tuesday in a one-sentence post on Facebook. He said, quote, as the political leader of the People's National Movement, I have today revoked the appointment of Ms. Marlene MacDonald as deputy political leader of the PNM, end quote. The development comes a day after MacDonald was granted $2 million bail on several charges of conspiracy to defraud the government and misbehavior in public office. She was unable to attend the magistrate's court hearing due to illness, but the matter went ahead in her absence. MacDonald and her common-law husband, Michael Carew, along with three others, are facing a total of 49 charges. They're due to return to court on September 9th. We get the details in this report from TV6 News. MacDonald, age 61, has been granted charity bail in the sum of $2 million for seven charges, including two for conspiracy to defraud the state. Her partner, Michael Carew, 74, has been given $500,000 bail for a total of eight charges. Edgar Zephyrin, age 75, is out on $1 million bail for 28 charges, 27 for money laundering and one for conspiracy. Victor McEachern, 65, has been granted $400,000 bail for five charges. Wayne Anthony, 66, has gotten $100,000 bail, having been charged with only one offense. The attorneys representing the five accused stated that none of them had prior convictions and some were suffering from ailments like hypertension and cancer. While noting the seriousness of the allegations, Director of Public Prosecution Roger Gaspar did not object to bail. The allegations stem from checks amounting to millions of dollars, which went to both the Caliber Foundation under Carew and the Provident Foundation for Development, to which Zephyrin is affiliated. The allegations are that McDonald approved the funds, and in addition, all of the accused received money knowing or having reasonable grounds to suspect that it was criminal property and constituted criminal conduct in the form of conspiracy to defraud the government. Meanwhile, the man who had initially been named to replace McDonald as, as public administration minister, attorney at law Garvin Simonette, has resigned from the Senate with immediate effect after confirming a past arrest for driving under the influence in the United States. It had been announced Monday morning that Simonette would have been sworn in that afternoon, but that never materialized because of new information that came to the attention of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. It turned out that Simonette had a 2014 DUI conviction. We get more in this report from CNC3's Jesse Ramdale. In a statement late Monday, Simonette said he accepted full responsibility for not disclosing the arrest, and he added that in light of the adverse media coverage regarding his culpability, it would have been inappropriate for him to accept the ministerial appointment. Staying in Trinidad and Tobago, prison officers are on alert after threats to kill two of them began circulating on social media. National Security Minister Stuart Young says all law enforcement and intelligence agencies are also on high alert and are working together to ensure the safety of prison officers. In a release, Young strongly denounced the recent threatening messages and said the safety and security of prison officers remain a top priority for the Ministry of National Security. Commissioner of Prisons Gerard Wilson advised all officers of the TNT Prison Service to exercise extreme caution and vigilance, especially when off duty. We get more in this TTT News Report. This advisory comes after several threats began circulating via the WhatsApp medium, indicating a plot to kill any two officers. Now, according to Mr. Wilson, all security agencies are on high alert and directives are in place especially for officers who live in what are deemed high-risk areas. It was only yesterday evening 
The 51-year-old wife of a prison officer was killed mere moments after she arrived at her home in Malabar. Police investiga investigators said the motive was yet to be determined. And National Security Minister Stuart Young says he remains fully committed to ensuring the safety of the nation's prison officers. His assurance comes in light of alleged threats made against the lives of two prison officers in a voice note circulating on social media. In a release on Tuesday, Minister Young said law enforcement and intelligence agencies are on high alert to maintain the security of the officers. The minister thanked all of the prison officers for their continued dedication to country, even with the existing challenges. The Antigua and Barbuda government says it's taking seriously a threat to the security of the country after a caller to a radio station warned of an, an Antigua resistance movement comprising ex-military people in the United States. Attorney General and Minister of Public Safety Stead Roy Benjamin said he's seeking an opinion from the Director of Public Prosecutions on the matter. In the meantime, the law enforcement agencies will take appropriate action. He added that authorities in the United States will also be informed of the threat to raise a military group on U.S. soil, which is a criminal offense. In a statement, the Office of the Attorney General and the Ministry for Public Safety said it had been made aware of the threats made by a person with the name Irwin Romeo on a privately owned radio station. In a recording provided to the ministry, the man said the Antiguan resistance, resistance movement will stalk town hall and other meetings by government officials and deal with them. In recent months in the U.S. and elsewhere, extremists have entered churches, supermarkets and other public places and murdered men, women and children. And Benjamin said the last thing anyone wants to see is the peace, calm and steady progress of Antigua and Barbuda disrupted by copycat attacks. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, protests in Haiti and Guyana. We'll have the details after the break. Stay with us. When you think of what we went through with Hurricane Irma, you had to be able to recognize what are the things we need to do to cope with the aftermath. The psychological trauma, to me, is probably the most telling on a lot of people. Preparedness is the key. So when people are prepared, when people have the, they have the, what their resources in terms of how they can cope with the disaster, they're better able to be able to uh, return to their normal life. They're better able to make decisions that are informed for themselves and for their family and then for their community. Be ready, look, listen, and link. Protests outside Haiti's parliament on Monday forced the postponement of the latest attempt to hear a petition by opposition deputies to impeach President Juvenal Moïse. At least 21 deputies had filed a motion accusing Moïse of high treason, claiming that he had violated the constitution and was leading the country to the edge of social explosion. The first attempt at debating the matter failed last week after the majority of the deputies, most of whom are aligned to Moïse's party, said it was up to the accusers to provide evidence 
of violations of the Constitution. More than 100 opposition supporters erected barricades of burning tires in front parliament on Monday. They also threw stones and shouted hostilities against the majority of the parliamentarians who oppose the indictment of President Moise. Authorities say several vehicles were damaged as the protesters clashed with police who used tear gas to remove them from in front of the building. Following discussions with the presidents of the three parliamentary blocs, Speaker Gary Bodo said a new date would be set for the debate. Political observers say the debate is aimed at prolonging the ratification of the new government. Earlier this month, Moise called on Parliament to approve the nomination and government of Prime Minister Fitzwilliam Michel. He described Michel as a brilliant civil servant who has devoted his entire career to serving the people of Haiti. And over in Guyana, a day before the High Court rules on whether the current house-to-house -house registration process being undertaken by the Ghana Elections Commission, GCOM, should be allowed to continue, the main opposition People's Progressive Party, PPP, kept up their protests outside the Ministry of the Presidency. PPP supporters called for elections to be called in keeping with the Caribbean Court of Justice ruling that the no-confidence motion passed against the government last December was valid and general and regional elections should be held. The elections are due three months after a no-confidence motion. That timeline went on pause while the matter was being challenged in court and therefore began from June 18th, the date of the ruling of the CCJ, putting the deadline at September 18th unless a two-thirds majority of the National Assembly agrees to an extension. Wednesday's ruling by Acting Chief Justice Roxanne George Wiltshire will determine whether GCOM can continue with the House to House registration that it says is necessary to create a clean voters list. The opposition's presidential candidate, Irfan Ali, said the protests will continue until elections are held, even as President David Granger and opposition leader Barrett Jagdio continue to meet. It's another day in Guyana, another day without elections, another day in breach of the Constitution, another day against democracy, another day against the rule of the law. So, as far as we are concerned, we have to be out here every single day until this government, government understands that they must adhere to the Constitution, they must adhere to the CCJ orders, and elections must be called. The, the meeting between the President and the leader of the opposition has nothing to do with the president executing his responsibility. And part of his responsibility is that he must dissolve parliament now. He must dissolve parliament now and call a date for elections. We are mixing things up. Outside of what is taking place in the court, as the CCJ would have ruled and the constitution says clearly, the president has a number of responsibilities. In the present circumstances, with the successful passage of the No Confidence, the President must dissolve Parliament and name a date for elections. There are calls in the Bahamas for firm action to protect the endangered conch. Earlier this year, scientists raised concern that Nassau's conch industry could become extinct within a decade due to overfishing. A study by Chicago's Shed Aquarium and the group Conch Community said the Bahamas is one of a few nations where substantial populations of queen conch remain and a large percentage of conch meat and products are exported. A report from National Geographic also stated that in 2015, about 400 metric tons of conch were caught in the Bahamas. Half was exported at an estimated value of $2.3 million. We get more in this report from ZNS Network News. With research pointing to the possible extinction of the Queen Conch in the Bahamas within the next 10 to 15 years, Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Yonbo Michael Pintard, says that the country must address a number of changes in the conch industry to save the mollusk, including stopping conch exports. One-fifth of all the conch that is uh, harvested in the Bahamas is exported. And while in the minds of many that is a small number, we believe that 600,000 pounds is a significant number. And, and, and therefore, again, we are concerned about the livelihood of those that have uh, built a business model on exporting, but we have to make this decision and, we have, and, we're, and we're making it. Uh, we have been consulting nationally, not just with fishers who are extremely important and uh, processing houses uh, or environmentalists. We believe the general public 
have an opinion and their opinion ought to be respected as it relates to count, which is an iconic species. And following a petition and the call for a closed conch season, Minister Pintard says that no official conclusion has been made yet on whether or not a closed conch season will be implemented. He added, though, that ministry officials are willing to hear all suggestions for a closed conch season. We are certainly prepared to look at every reasonable suggestion uh, that is made. Uh, uh, successive governments have done so. We have looked at the lobster uh, crisis that we faced and we had a closed season, that is now a marine species that is being harvested and managed in a sustainable way. And with conch, again, we, we are again allowing the science and consultation to drive our decisions. Ahead in sport, West Indies ODI captain Carlos Brathwaite dismisses suggestions that there's a lack of confidence within the team in the current series against India. We'll be right back. As a small business owner, you have to make sure your technology is available and operational at all times. But what happens when your network crashes, your email goes down, or your user systems get a virus? You may try to fix the issue yourself, but you can end up making the problem a lot worse. At Digital Networking Solutions, we're more than just people who try to fix your computers. We monitor, maintain, and support your IT systems so that you can focus on growing your business to its fullest potential. When you sign up for one of our IT support plans, we get familiar with your IT environment beforehand, so we can manage it proactively as if it were our own. Your business deserves the best IT services available to ensure it functions to its maximum efficiency. So give us a try today. Email or call us, and we will give you a free network assessment to determine whether now is the time for your small business to adopt digital networking solutions for a smoother, more reliable network experience. The biggest summer concert festival ever. ever, ever. Saturday, August 24th. Queen's Park, Savannah. One Caribbean. Many beats. Carafesta Island Beats. Super concert. The sound of the Caribbean. Get ready for Shaggy. Shaggy. The King of Soca. Marshall Montano and his band. The renowned Casal. Nyla Blackman, Alison Hines from Barbados, the Calypso Queen of the World, Calypso Rose, Antigua's Ricardo Drew, Nival Chaitla, Michard M, Ricky Jai, Voice, Blex, and the All Stars. Carifesta Island Beats. One Caribbean. One people. Many beats. Powered by NLCB. Blue Water. Caribbean Airlines. Digicel. And Southern Sales Car Rentals. Barbados. Renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics. The island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. West Indies ODI captain Carlos Brathwaite has dismissed suggestions that lack of confidence is the reason behind the team's performance in the current series against India. The West Indies are down 1-0 in the three-match series after their first game was rained out and then they lost by 59 runs at the Queen's Park Oval. Speaking ahead of Wednesday's final game, Brathwaite said good execution is critical for the team. I don't think it's belief per se, um, because if you ask any guys in the dressing room if they believe we can win, I think they do believe we can win. Um, but I guess the know-how um, and the execution of that belief is where we've been lacking, especially in key moments, as I said. So I don't think it's a lack of belief, I don't think it's a lack of passion. Um, and in most cases, not even a lack of skill but we just haven't been executed what we wanted to execute um, in key moments of the game and it's hampered us um, for, well, since the England series for the majority of the World Cup and then in this last game. 
Reflecting on their last ODI series against England in the Caribbean, Rathard said he's hopeful they can level the series against the Indians. Obviously, we drew the last series against England at home as well. Um, and then going into the last game, I think it's just for us to get the batting right in both parts. If we could divide the batting in half, um, we either get good starts and then throw it away at the back end, or we don't get good starts and then run it close because of a rear guard effort. Um, I think the batting was much improved, especially from the T20, um, from the overall body performance in the World Cup as well. But we didn't close it off, so it's for the batting to get us in a position similar like the second game, more often than not. Um, hopefully that happens tomorrow as well. And for the lower half to close up the game. Former West Indies head coach Phil Simmons is among six candidates shortlisted for the high-profile position of India head coach. The 56-year-old Trinidadian who played 26 tests and 143 one-day internationals for West Indies between 1987 and 1999 is under consideration along with former New Zealand coach Mike Hessen, former Sri Lanka coach Tom Moody, experienced T20 coach Robin Singh, former India manager Lal Chand Rajput and current India head coach Ravi Sastri. The candidates will be interviewed on a Friday by a three-member cricket advisory committee. Simmons was appointed West Indies head coach following the 2015 World Cup as a replacement for Barbadian and former West Indies fast bowler Otis Gibson. But he lasted a little more than a year before he was sacked six months after overseeing the Caribbean side's dramatic capture of the 2016 T20 World Cup in India. Simmons had previously spent eight years as Ireland's coach and last month concluded a near two-year stint in charge of Afghanistan, overseeing their acquisition of test status and their maiden appearance at the just-concluded ICC World Cup in England. To football now, 12 international-based players have been called up to represent Guyana at the CONCACAF Women's Under-17 Qualifiers. HGP's Jaden Samuels tells us more. Guyana is set to compete in Curaçao from August 17 to 25 in this year's CONCACAF Under-17 Women's Football Championship. Coach for the Guyanese ladies, Aquila Castello, said the side is ready and will comprise 12 international-based players and 8 local players. The head coach expressed optimism about Guyana's performance, saying she is expecting positive results. From this group, Guyana has been placed in Group D along with the Bahamas, Curaçao and St. Keeper Nathan Trott is fighting to recover from a groin injury which has delayed his debut for English League One outfit AFC Wimbledon. The 20-year-old joined Wimb Wimbledon on a season-long loan this summer from Premier League club West Ham United and featured heavily in their pre-season preparations. But he picked up the injury just before the season started and is now back at his parent club where he is receiving treatment. Trott made 12 appearances during an injury hit season for West Ham last term, 10 in Premier League 2 and twice in the Czech Trade Trophy, as well as being named in the London club's senior squad on three occasions. He initially signed a two and a half year deal with West Ham in January 2016, which has since been extended twice until 2022. Trott has also featured for England at youth level. He was a member of the England under-19 squad who won the 2017 European Championship in Georgia and has also been capped six times for England under-20. Trinidadian Samantha Wallace produced another excellent performance to keep New South Wales Swifts at the top of the Australian Super Netball League with a hard-fought 57-51 win over Melbourne Vixens last weekend, playing at Keith's Key centre Saturday, the 25-year-old goal shooter scored 45 goals from 49 attempts as the leaders picked up their ninth win of the season to move to 72 points, four clear of Sunshine Coast Lightning. Wallace was supported by goal attack Sophie Garbin, who scored 12 from 18 attempts. For the losers, Tegan Phillip led with 24 goals from 30 attempts. And finally, Jamaican jockey Richard Mears logged an impressive triple at the weekend to overtake Alex Cruz at the top of the standings and create a tense finish to the season at Asanobia Downs. Riding on Saturday's seven-race card, Mears never made it to the winner's enclosure until race four, when he scored with 3-1 chance twisted sensation, but then won two of the last three races with success aboard 8-1 bet 
Mitson Hower in race five and 16-1 long shot Courageous in the day's final race. JF Money Girl and Kathleen Thunder produced the splits before Twisted Sensation swept into contention in the stretch dueled with Crackling Thunder and got to the wire by a nose. Asinobia's Darren Dunn has the call. From the far outside, that's Time Honor. Away well to the inside, JF Money Girl is going to go and grab the early lead. In between horses, that's Crackling Thunder. Commando Beach also up early in fourth, making a move on the outside, Barbie's Quest in fifth. In between horses, Amy on tour, and then it's back to Twisted Sensation, and now the trailer will be Time Honor. The opening quarter, 24 and 1, and JF Money Girl with the lead by a half length. Cracklin Thunder to her outside in second. Twisted Sensation looking for room in third to the outside, Amy on tour. Then it's Barbie's Quest as they hit the head of the lane. It's Cracklin Thunder who leads them down the lane to the outside. Amy on tour. Twisted Sensation now has some running room on the inside. Cracklin Thunder with the lead. Twisted Sensation on the inside. It's going to be these two to the wire. Twisted Sensation. Cracklin Thunder. Noses on the wire. Photo finish in race four. And that's the sport. We'll be right back. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture, we can't wait to welcome you. We know about hell in a cell. It's a rage in a cage. Gladiators them got words in the head because they done put pen to the page. And we now come sing with no violence, curse words, and we done tend to the stage. So shout out the big man who put the whole thing together, uh, put it and elevate. Elevate, elevate. Truth is why I done been training. Touch stage and I done done plating. Swag tough, got to raise your gazing. Lyric clean, let it just done bathing. Uh, nothing normal, this is ab. Hit my opponents with a jab. Punchline from the first line. Got Scuddy throwing up his hands. Leon and Juba, Juba about to dance. Now we're ready to show the world. The opening ceremony of Carafesta 14 will be aired live on Friday, August 16th from 6.45 p.m. View the wondrous beauty and majesty of the Caribbean's premier arts and cultural festival. The best of Caribbean culture on full display at the Queen's Park Savannah Port of Spain. Friday, 16th August at 6.45 p.m. Fourteen Trinidad and Tobago. Marlene McDonald removed as deputy leader of the ruling People's National Movement in Trinidad less than 24 hours after she was fired as public administration minister. And in sport, West Indies ODI captain Carlos Brathwaite dismisses suggestions that there's a lack of self-confidence within the team in the current series against India. And that's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport round the clock, subscribe to canonnews.com. And for more of our programming, log on to caribvision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.